Hello and welcome to another episode of the DMG Tech Show. I am your host, Jonathan Parkinson. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to replace your Chrome OS with a Linux distribution. Now, I know that's going to be blasphemy for some of you diehard Chrome OS fans, as I'm one of those, I will agree. But I do have a few Chromebooks, so I decided, hey, why not make a try out of this? And I do love Linux, especially elementary OS. And this is what elementary OS is. Uh, extremely clean, uh, simple to use, fast, everything you're looking for for a Linux desktop environment. So for this to actually happen, we're going to need to do a few things first before we actually get into the Linux desktop. So I'm going to pull open a really neat tutorial. Now this is the tutorial I followed myself. It says it's for the HP Chromebook 14. That is not the case. You can use this uh, for the Acer C720. Uh, that's the one I'm going to be using actually. Pretty much anything that's going to be Intel based that you can boot into legacy boot mode or CBIOS, however you want to say it, that is going to be the major difference, I guess, when it comes to push and shove on this. So what you're going to need first is you're going to need to enable developer mode. Now to enable developer mode on the HP Chromebook as well as the Acer C720, it's going to be the exact same thing. So just press the escape button, the refresh button, which is going to be that arrow going in a circle as well as just tapping the power button. Now you're going to pop up with a scary screen. From there you're just going to push control D and let your computer boot into developer mode. It's going to take a few minutes, maybe 15-20 minutes depending on how fast everything is. And that's just setting up your Chromebook to make sure that it's ready to go so it'll give you more access to a lot of the files on the back end of stuff. Now from there you can either go in, log directly into your Chromebook, or you can go from a guest account. Now if you're just going to be doing a typical crouton installation then I would definitely recommend logging into your account and doing it from there. If you're going to be completely replacing Chrome OS and doing it with the elementary OS or another Ubuntu variety then you can go ahead and go into the guest accounts. Uh, the next thing you're going to need to do is make sure that you go get a 64-bit image of the software that you want. I do recommend elementary OS as this whole video is going to be based on that. So to ensure that's a 64-bit, you just want to make sure the AMD 64 is in the iOS you, or ISO you decide to download. I will have a link in the description on where to go. Uh, it's just typically the elementaryos.org. And you can just go find it from there. It is free. All Ubuntu versions are free. Even though it just shows that you can pay, you can just click right below that and don't give anything. If you are a big fan, though, of the elementary OS and you would like to continue to see it develop the way it is, then, you know, it would be nice to go ahead and throw a few dollars towards the developers. Okay, so once you have the iOS uh, downloaded, uh, I'm going to recommend, again, maybe putting it onto your Android device if you do have an Android device. The reason is, is you can go into the Play Store and look up something called Drive Droid, all one word, D-R-I-V-E-D-R-O-I-D. -E and that's going to be actually a amazing application where you can put an image of a Linux uh, ISO and then you can host it so your Android device will turn into kind of a USB stick just for the time being and then you just simply uh, tap it again and it removes it and it, your phone's back to being normal even though you can make calls and do everything is normal anyways but just take that into mind so you don't have to keep a bunch of files on your computer in case you need to ref uh, to restore it or any of that type of stuff and you don't want to have to wait and re-download all those files again they're about 800 megabytes give or take okay so once you have all your files, so which is going to be the ISO pretty much, you're going to now need to make sure you're logged into either Guest or into your actual Chrome OS side of things. And then press Control-Alt-T. This is going to bring up what we call the crosh. From there, you're going to type in the word shell. Okay. And then press Enter. And you're going to get a little green text. And then you're going to be able to type in some more stuff. Uh, from there, you're going to want to type in sudo cross system and all this right here this legacy what this is saying is it's enabling the your chromebook to boot from a usb drive that's what the whole legacy boot is so normally when you turn on a computer now that you have or sorry the chromebook now that you have the developer set up you're going to have to turn it on press control d and then it's going to boot into chrome os side of things but before you even press control d there's going to be another button there that you're going to press which is going to be control l and that is going to let us boot into a USB slot which eventually that USB slot will be taken up by the Chrome OS or sorry the elementary OS 
and that's how you're going to boot into it every time. But then when we get into the a little more detail, I'll show you how to completely bypass that. So when you just press the power button on your computer, it will boot directly into elementary OS. There's no buttons you need to push. You don't have to worry about pushing the space bar and deleting everything. Everything will just be flush. Okay, so we're not going to actually restart our computer as it says right here into control D. Uh, what you're going to need to do is now take that the ISO put it onto your Android device or make a live USB drive out of it and we're gonna go from there so go ahead and restart your computer instead of pressing control D press control L and it's going to attempt to boot into your USB as long as you have your USB set up correctly now that's gonna be a whole nother video in itself which I'll put up here shortly on how to make a live USB within Chrome OS if you know how to do that with you th using that Drive Droid app, that's probably going to be the best way to do. So you're going to pretty much skip step six through. Yeah, you're going to skip the rest of the steps here. 14. What we're going to do now is go into step two completely and upgrade our kernel, which I will do in the very next video. But that's all you're going to need to do. The installation for the actual uh, elementary OS is going to take some time. It's a normal installation. Uh, when you plug in your USB, be it drive droid or through a live USB stick, you'll just you'll come up to where an option when you press Control L after you boot, you're going to either it's going to try to boot directly into it. If it doesn't try to boot directly into it, and it kind of hangs around. Go ahead and restart your Chromebook. Press Control L. Uh, after it's bypassed that first scary screen, you're going to notice some text come up on the top left corner. Go ahead and press escape after the second line pops up. And then you're going to choose the live USB. It's going to either going to be one or two or three if you have three USB sticks plugged into your device at that time. Uh, then you're just going to press that number, press enter. Now, it's going to take a while to even see progress happening. The, the first time I tried to do this, it was just a blank screen with a cursor on the top left corner just flashing and I was getting irritated so I kind of just walked away for a minute and when I came back things started so don't think that just because you have a black screen that nothing's happening it's actually setting everything up in the background so give it about five to ten minutes if you don't see anything after that then by all means try to step over again if you do have questions about that part uh, just leave it in the co uh, comment section below as always don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching